Hi, I'm Trish and welcome to my women's online Bible study. Today we are covering Genesis chapters 20 through 22. So let's say a short prayer and dive right in. Heavenly Father, uh, please help me to uh, speak with clarity. Give the hearer the ear to hear uh, the truth divided in scripture. Let us uh, give us wisdom, uh, understanding and knowledge to apply it to our lives that we may walk upright before you. Uh, let us share your word in truth. Um, in Jesus' name I pray, amen. Okay, so um, I'm reading from the English Standard Version. So if you're here for the read-through, let's get started. <laughs> Genesis 20, from there, and Abraham was 20 toward the territory of the Negev and lived between Kadesh and Shur. And he sojourned in Gerah and Abraham said to Sarah, Sarah, his wife, she is my sister. And Abimelech, king of Gerah, sent and took Sarah. But God came to Abimelech in a dream by night and said to him, behold, you are a dead man because of the woman whom you have taken for she is a man's wife. Now Abimelech had not approached her. So he said, Lord, Will you kill an innocent people? Did he not himself say that to me she is my sister? And she herself said, he is my brother. In the integrity of my heart and the innocence of my hands, I have done this. Then God said to him in, in the dream, yes, I know that you have done this in the integrity of your heart. And it was I who kept you from, no, from sinning against me. Therefore, I, I did not let you touch her. Now then, return the man's wife, for he is a prophet, so that he will pray for you, and you shall live. But if you do not return her, know that you shall surely die, you and all who are yours. So Abimelech rose early in the morning and called all his servants and told them all these things. And the men were very much afraid. Then Abimelech called Abraham and said to him, What have you done to us? And how have I sinned against you that you have brought on me and my kingdom a great sin? You have done to me things that ought not to be done. And Abimelech said to Abraham, What did you see that you did this thing? And Abraham said, I did it because I thought there is no fear of God at all in this place. And they will kill me because of my wife. Besides, she is indeed my sister, the daughter of my father, though not the daughter of my mother. And she became my wife. And when God caused me to wander from my father's house, I said to her, this is the kindness you must do to me at every place to which we come. Say of me, he is my brother. Then Abimelech took sheep and oxen and male servants and female servants and gave them to Abraham and returned Sarah to his wife, and returned Sarah, his wife to him. And Abimelech said, behold, my land is before you. Dwell where it pleases you. To Sarah, he said, behold, I have given your brother a thousand pieces of silver. It is a sign of your innocence in the eyes of all who are with you. And before everyone, you are vindicated. Then Abraham uh, prayed to God and God healed Abimelech and also healed his wife and female slaves so that they bore children. For the Lord had closed all the wombs of the house of, Abimelech's, of Abimelech because of Sarah, Abraham's wife. Genesis 21, the Lord visited Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did to Sarah as he had promised. And Sarah conceived and bore Abraham a son in his old age at the time of which God had spoken to him. Abraham called the name of his son who was born to him, whom Sarah bore, to, bore him, Isaac. And Abraham circumcised his son, Isaac, when he was eight days old, as God had commanded him. Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born to him. And Sarah said, God has, made la God has made laughter for me. Everyone who hears will laugh over me. She, and she said, who would have said to Abraham that Sarah would nurse children? Yet I have borne him a son in his old age. And the child grew and was weaned. And Abraham made a great feast on that day that Isaac was weaned. But Sarah saw the son of Hagar, the Egyptian, whom she had bore to Abraham, laughing. So she said to Abraham, cast out this slave woman with her son, for the son of this slave woman shall not be heir with my son Isaac. And the thing was very displeasing to Abraham on account of his son. But God said to Abraham, be not displeased because of the boy and because of your slave woman. 
Whatever Sarah says to you, do as she tells you. For though Isaac shall, for through Isaac shall your offspring be named. And I will make a nation of the son of the slave woman also, because he is your offspring. So Abraham rose early in the morning and took bread and a skin of water and gave it to Hagar, putting it on her shoulder along with the child and sent her away. And she departed and wandered in the wilderness of Beersheba. When the water and the skin was gone, she put the child under one of the bushes. Then she went and sat down opposite him a good way off, about the distance of a bow shot. For she said, let me not look on the death of the child. And as she sat opposite him, she lifted up her voice and wept. And God heard the voice of the boy and the angel of God called to Hagar from he heaven and said to her, what troubles you, Hagar? Fear not, for God has heard the voice of the boy where, where he is. Oh, lift up the boy and hold him fast with your hand, for I will make him into a great nation. And God opened her eyes and she saw a well of water and she went and filled the skin with water and gave the boy a drink. And God was with the boy and he grew up. He lived in the wilderness and became an expert with the bow. He lived in the wilderness of Paran, and his mother took a wife for him from the land of Egypt. At that time, Abimelech and Philcal, the commander of his army, said to Abraham, God is with you in all that you do. Now therefore swear to me here by God that you will not deal falsely with me or with my descendants or with my uh, posterity, but as I have dealt kind, kindly with you, so you will deal with me and with the land where you have sojourned. And Abraham said, I will swear. When Abraham reproved Abimelech about a well of water that Abimelech's servants had seized, Abimelech said, I do not know who has done this thing. You did not tell me, and I have not heard of it until today. So Abraham took sheep and oxen and gave them to Abimelech, and the two men made a covenant. Abraham sent seven ewe lambs of the flock apart, set seven ewe lambs of the park of a uh, flock apart. And Abraham said to and Abimelech, sorry, and Abimelech said to Abraham, What is the meaning of these seven ewe lambs that you have set apart? He said, These seven ewe lambs you will take from my hand, that this may be a witness for me that I dug this well. Therefore the place was called Beersheba, Beersheba because there both of them swore an oath. So they made a covenant at Be Beersheba. Then Abimelech and Phicol, the commander of his army, rose up and returned to the land of the Philistines. Abraham planted a tamarisk ter tree in Beersheba and called there on the name of the Lord, the everlasting God. And Abraham sojourned many days in the land of the Philistines. At Genesis 22, after these things, God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, here I am. He said, take your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. So Abraham rose early in the morning, saddled his donkey, and took two of his young men with him and his son and his son Isaac. And he cut the wood for the burnt offering and arose and went to the place of which God had told him. On the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place from afar. Then Abraham said to his young men, stay here with the donkey and oh, stay here with the donkey. I and the boy will go over there and worship and come back and come again to you. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on Isaac, his son. And he took in his hand the, the fire and the knife. So they went both of them together. And Isaac said to his father, Abraham, my father. And he said, here I am, my son. He said, behold, the fire and the wood, behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for the burnt, for a burnt offering? Abraham said, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. So they went both of them together. When they came to the place of which God had told him, Abraham built the altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac, his son, and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then Abraham reached out his hand and took the knife to slaughter his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And, and he said, here I am. He said, do not lay your hand on the board, boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, seeing you have not withheld your son, your only son from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked and behold, behind him was a ram caught in the thicket by his horns. 
And Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called the name of that place. The Lord will provide. As it is said to this day, on the mount of the Lord it shall be provided. And the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time from heaven and said, By myself I have sworn, declares the Lord, because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son. I will surely bless you, and I will surely multiply, multiply your offspring as the stars of heaven and as the sand that is on the seashore. And your offspring shall possess the gate of his enemies, and in your offspring shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because he have because you have obeyed my voice. So Abraham returned to his young men, and they arose and went together to Beersheba. And Abraham lived at Beersheba. Now after these things it was told to Abraham, Behold, Milcah, Milcah also has borne children to your brother Nahor, Uz his firstborn, Buz his brother, Kemuel the father of Aram, uh, Shadis, Hazel, Pildash, uh, Jitlaf, and Bethuel, Bethuel, Bethuel father Rebekah. These eight Milcah bore to Nahor, Abraham's brother. Moreover, his concubine, whose name was uh, Ruma, bore Teba, Gaham, Tehash, and uh, Maacah. Lord God, bless the reading of your word. Uh, let it fill us up till we can eat of it again. So if you are just here for the uh, read-through, thank you for... Um, uh, coming to read through scripture with me and I hope to see you again and if you are here for the in-depth Bible study stick around and we'll dig right in. Okay so um, beginning from uh, Genesis 20 we have um, Abraham and um, he is journeying towards the territory of Negev uh, and he is going to encounter Abimelech and so he um, Abraham and Sarah is going to do the sibling rules again to Abimelech um, because um, as he explains uh, the reason why he did it, because the fear of God is not in that place. Uh, what's his reason down in verse 11? So Abraham, um, uh, the, the lifestyle that Abimelech leads, uh, uh, leads Abraham to determine that, hey, these aren't godly people. So let's say that you're my sister and um, just in case, so they won't kill me because of your account and, you know, try to take her from him. So he didn't think, he didn't think that they were upright, godly people who would just accept them as a married couple and, and be friendly to them. Um, uh, and so he was afraid and, and, and they, and they did this rules. Um, uh, I just, I'm always impressed at Sarah at this point, just because she's like 90 years old and, people are wanting to kill her husband because of her beauty. <laughs> so she must be quite the catch. Um, even at, even in her old age, you know, he, he does, he does actually want to be with her and he, and, 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 uh, he takes her, they don't do anything. They don't have a sexual intercourse that is clear in the chapter. Um, and that God visits uh, Bimelech in a dream and he warns him to return him and, and says that, Hey, this is, this is some, this is a man's wife. And, and Abimelech is uh, uh, telling him that, hey, uh, I didn't do anything. And he was like, I know you didn't do anything. That's why I'm warning you. Return her. Abraham will pray for you. And your whole household will be healed because God had closed up all the wombs of the other women in, uh, uh, in uh, Abimelech's land. And also that um, ungodly people uh, can be visited by God in a dream as well as, 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 well as believers. Um, I, uh, I don't know if... Uh, can't even think of his name, but I, I saw an actor, a famous actor on the news uh, recently, and um, he was saying that he had a dream that he had a tumor, and then he went to the doctor, and, and he literally had a tumor. So, like, um, certain things can come in the form of a dream. Um, uh, he could be a believer. I, I've not, I can't even think of his name right now, but it, it, it just happened. So, <laughs> sorry, uh, mind blank. Um, and so moving on, uh, chapter uh, 20, let's see if I, I wanted to say anything else about that. No, uh, Abraham does. He, he returns her. He, he says that um, uh, Sarah is uh, vindicated, meaning so there's no question as to who the father of her child is going to be. It's going to be Abraham. So he didn't lay with her, and that's clear. And then Abraham does pray for Abimelech, um, and uh, his household is healed. 
So moving on to chapter 21, uh, the, we have the birth of Isaac. Um, and uh, he's circumcised on the eighth day, uh, following with the circumcision covenant. Uh, and uh, Abraham is 100 years old at this point in time in his life. And so that is, um, uh, we're, I'm gonna drop down to um, after she weaned um, Isaac and chapter, I mean, verse eight of chapter 21. And um, they made a, a great feast uh, because of the, uh, they're excited about the birth of his son. And at this point in time, Sarah sees Ishmael laughing and i guess he was laughing at their feast or whatever i don't know what he was laughing at but it wasn't a good thing like he was making fun of them and so um sarah gets upset and she's like uh, she tells uh abraham hey cast out this um this slave he's she's not a, anymore a bond service she referred to as a bond servant before but she's so upset now now she's referred to as a slave uh cast her and her son away i don't want her dwelling here and this didn't uh sit right with abraham but the lord said listen to the voice of your wife um i will make a great na nation out of him as well because um ishmael is circumcised too he was circumcised um but he is not the seed of promise um he re received that seal and uh, uh, throughout the remaining of the chapter of 21, Ishmael does go on. Uh, uh, God provides for them after they are sent away. Hagar and Ishmael are sent away. Uh, she's running out of water because Abraham only sent her away with like a, a canister of water. And so she's running out of water. She doesn't want to see the death of her son, but an angel appears and says, hey, you know, God will make a great nation out of, uh, uh, from your son. And uh, she looks and sees a well, and then it explains on that Ishmael grows and he becomes really, he lives in the wilderness. He becomes really skilled at the bow and um, he's provided a wife out of Egypt. And that ends um, verse, what is that, 20, 21. And so um, after that, the remaining of the chapters 22 through 34, Abraham and Abimelech are making a treaty uh, with each other. Abimelech can see how God is blessing him, so he wants to make a treaty with Abraham. Abraham agrees to the treaty, and he uh, stays there. He lives there in the land of the Philistine for quite some time. So it says he sojourned there, and that's the end of chapter 21. And then finally, chapter 22, we have the sacrifice of Isaac. Um, after these things, God tested Abraham is the first line of chapter 22. It says test, not tempt. Um, so uh, uh, goes with the, like the Lord's prayer, lead us not into temptation. We don't want to be led into a place where we are tested by the Lord because we never know what we're going to do. Um, so he's, he's testing him with the sacrifice of his son, Isaac. Now, um, child sacrifice is not something that is done, um, by followers of God. It is done by some of the surrounding nations at this point in time, but not by, um, uh, the, ch uh, children of the Lord. Um, it's not something that the Lord, um, does. So when he tells him to go and sacrifice his son, um, I don't think that it was an easy thing for Abraham to come to, but I think that he had like the backdrop of the Lord being in his life and being there for him saying, Hey, I had this son in my old age, my wife, she was past, you know, childbearing years. And the Lord gave me this son. It was a miracle. Like the Lord can do all things. He told me that he sent the angels before me and they, said that they were going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah and I saw it destroyed and he has provided for me and every time even Abimelech um uh he sends them away with gifts you know even when they when they journeyed to 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 Philistine um the land of the Philistine uh Philistines uh uh, with their possessions and they dwelt there and he he was afraid while they was there and and they uh took sarah and the whole dream back in chapter 20 um uh even when 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 god uh restored uh his wife to him uh all of the gifts that have been like he's continuously blessing him so he 
he he's probably pondering it. Scripture doesn't say, but I'm just think I'm just saying that he has all of this backdrop of the character of God, who God is, and and what God can do um, while making this decision. So he's he's prepared to go. Um, I don't think that it was an easy journey, uh, especially when his son asks. You know, I see the fire in the wood, but where's the sacrifice? And he just says that the Lord is going to provide the sacrifice. At this point in time, I'm thinking that Isaac is probably crying too because he's seeing his dad bind him up and standing over him with the knife. But the faith of Abraham is um, is that when he leaves to go, he, he, he tells the servants in uh, verse 5 of chapter 22 uh, that they're going over to worship and they'll be back and they're going to come back. They, them and his son, they they are going to uh, return to them. So he, he's, he's got faith that the Lord is going to bring Isaac back from the dead. I'm not sure how he thought that he was going to do it, but he knows that the Lord said that this is the promise and, and this is what I'm going to do. And he saw past the test somehow, you know, so um, I don't know how you would see past the test, you know, in today's age, and which is why we, when we're saying our daily prayer uh, from the Lord's Prayer, Matthew 6 um, and 9, and, 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 and the following verses, that um, uh, we, we, we're asking, you know, Lord, lead us not into temptation, a, a, a point where we're being tested. So, um, because we don't know, we don't know what we would do, but Abraham, uh, literally he had, he's the father of faith. <laughs> and so he, um, he goes to sacrifice, but before he, uh, brings the knife down onto Isaac, an angel stops him and, uh, the Lord truly blesses him and says that, Hey, because you have done this, um, uh, your seed will be blessed and many nations will come from him. And then, um, dropping down to, uh, uh, verse 20, it ends the chapter with uh, Abraham's uh, brother, Nahor, and who was born to him, and uh, Bethuel, father Rebekah. So it's setting up for the introduction of different characters that are to come in a later study. So um, that is it. And uh, thank you for tuning in with me um, and uh, going through scripture. Uh, I hope it's the, uh, it's a mean of, bl of blessing. It's a means of blessing to you, uh, as it is to me um, reading through it with you guys. Um, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May He make His face to shine upon you and bring you peace, both now and forevermore. Bye.